you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Don't you love times of worship? So wonderful. We have to have those. And you have to have those in your own time. Um, Nate and I were just on a little getaway to Colorado and then um, Minnesota. And there were certain times where we didn't have real good service up in the mountains. And um, he said, I wish we could just have some worship music. But all my worship music was, um, requires Wi-Fi. So, um, but how many of you know just the atmosphere that that sets? And when you don't have it, you really miss it. So I just chose to just sing, even though I didn't have the worship. And you know what? Sometimes it's good like that. Those little songs that come up out of your spirit, that come up out of your heart. I had one earlier today. Just, um, I've made kind of a promise with the Lord, but anytime those songs come to you, anytime those things, sing them out. Because the spirit, when he brings those things to you, it's it's not just like, oh, yeah, that's a song that I remember from when I was a kid. Or, oh, that that's just a cute little song. Sometimes even like Jesus loves me, and you'll think, that's just a cute little kid song. But you know what? There's something the Spirit's wanting to do. He's wanting to do something in you, and he's, he's waiting for our mouths to be used to do what? To sing forth his praise. Why? Because he can move. He can do stuff. And you know what? Sometimes your praise isn't even just for you. Sometimes that praise is maybe for your coworkers or the atmosphere you're in or someone way across the world. But how many of you know when we use our mouth to sing his praise, it's great to declare the word, but there is something powerful about singing and declaring the word, especially when it's an alive word that the Holy Spirit's bringing up in the moment. So I just encourage you in those times to obey that. Okay, we are going to get into the word tonight. I am excited to be with you all. So tonight's message is called Don't Be Troubled. Don't be troubled. And that's just a phrase, actually, that I woke up with this morning. Just don't be troubled. How many of you know there can be a lot going on, a lot in our world right now, that wants to cause us to do what? To be troubled. Or we could say to be full of care. Or we could say to be worried. Or how I am sometimes, I want to get all the information and piece everything together and figure it out. How many of you are that kind of person? You just want to figure it out. But you know what? We weren't meant to figure it out. We're meant to trust. Amen? So we're going to look at this tonight. And then we are, actually it was interesting when we were laying out the um, services for the rest of the year for Wednesdays a um, couple months back. And... Um, we were telling one of the services that Pastor Nate and I were due, and then the ones um, to fill in. And um, all the month of October, I had just told um, Pastor Nate, I said, I just really feel like we need to highlight on prayer and the elections coming up. And um, so we did that. And then he said, oh, actually, November 4th, I know that um, he was gone, but he said, I know you'll be there. But he said, I think we still need to focus. He said, there's just something. I still think we need to focus in on the election and prayer. How ironic, right? <laughs> um, that is how the spirit works. He knows what's coming ahead. And so he prepares. So I am going to talk about don't be troubled. But um, at the tail end of this, what I want to do is I want to take just a little bit and we're going to pray together over our nation. And also we're going to pray over sickness. Um, because I feel like these are the two areas right now that the enemy is trying to get us troubled with. Not to say that we don't, there's not other stuff, and as I minister tonight and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, I'm sure there's lots of things we could be troubled with, but as a body tonight, as a corporate body, that's what I want to focus in on, is our nation and also health, and um, we don't have to be troubled about either. And I love what um, Juan said at the beginning, oftentimes we can picture God up there like, oh no, what... <laughs> What now? What's going to happen? Because we're that way sometimes, right? We look and think, oh, no, what now? What's going to happen? God's not that way, and he's not playing catch-up. 
He's not ever like freaked out. He's not, he has a plan. And we have to trust him and trust that plan and also be a part of that plan and work with him through our words and through prayer. Amen. Okay, so let's go to 2 Corinthians 1. And we'll start in verse 3, and then we're going to skip down um, to, uh, to verses 8 through 9. And I'm, I'm just doing all Amplified Classic tonight. So um, I think one other verse may be in the Passion, but all Amplified Classic. Okay, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of sympathy, pity, and mercy, and the God who is the source of every comfort, consolation, and encouragement. So let's stop there. Who is the source of our comfort? Don't you love that? We have one source. We talked about this just probably a month or two ago. I don't remember, but where we talked about trusting in God. One source. You know your job is not your source. Your political party is not your source. The president is not your source. Your boss is not your source. And you know what? If the person you wanted to win wins, is that your comfort? That's where we have to get to. Who is my source? Who is the God of all comfort? What does it say right here? He is the source of all comfort. So if he's the source, then when I'm tempted to be troubled or to fear, do I go to the news media? Do I go to my friend? Do I go to Instagram, uh, the girl I love to follow because she always posts like those posts? Who do I go to? I go to the source. If I'm needing comfort, I go to the source. Now, not to say that we don't need other people or other things, but if I am going around my source to go to somebody else, I need to go to the source first. Because that's where I get my comfort. Okay, so the source of every comfort. Um, verse 8, for we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about the affliction and oppressing distress, distress which befell us in the province of Asia. How we were so utterly and unbearably weighed down and crushed that we despaired even of life itself. Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. But that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on ourselves instead of on God who raises the dead. I love this. So what was it? They were facing persecution. They were facing pressure. They were facing stuff that, like, we just would rather die. That's got to be pretty bad. Right? But what was it saying? We did not... It was getting us to focus on ourselves and what we could do. Have you ever been there before where something's hard and um, maybe some of you more than others just based off of your personality, but when something's hard, you just kind of go in and you're just like, I got it. I can do it. I can fight it. I, I can get through this. I can, I can, I can. And oftentimes what? I become the source. And you know what? That may last for a little while, but it won't last very long. Before we realize what? Who is the source? He is the source. He is the source. Okay. So walking by faith does not ensure that you won't be challenged, tempted, or pushed. We're a word of faith church, right? We walk by faith, right? That was a little weak. We walk by faith, right? So because we walk by faith, that does not mean... We never have challenges that arise. We never have something that comes up that wants to contradict what God's word says. Otherwise, what? It wouldn't take faith, right? It would just be like Brother Hagin used to say, flowery beds of ease, right? But it takes faith. So faith is your and my response to what comes. So when something comes my way, faith says, nope, nope, I can get over that. Faith says what God's word says. So faith is what? My response to the pressures of life that come. What do we see with Paul? 
There was times he was persecuted. I mean, this guy went through it all, right? And out of all the guys who could have quit, it could have been Paul. But what did he have? He had God's word. He had faith. He responded in faith. You know what? He may have been down for a little bit. But you know what? It's like I think of Erin uh, when she, was it you who had that little um, thing you punch down and it pops back up? That's how we got to be. Don't let, if the enemy pops you down, just pop right back up. Don't quit. Quit is not in our vocabulary. Right? No matter what. You know what? Even with these elections, quit is not in our vocabulary. What does that mean? So if our person gets in office, then what? Oh, no. What should we still do? Pray. Plead the blood of Jesus. Declare Jesus over our nation. If someone gets in who we don't want, what should we still do? Pray for them. Pray for our nation. Declare what God's word says. It doesn't matter who's there. God's word still remains. Why? Because my trust isn't in that. My trust is in the source. Amen? Okay. So stop relying on man and trust in God. Okay, 2 Corinthians 1.10 says this. For it is he who rescued and saved us from such a perilous death, and he will still rescue and save us. In and on him we have set our hope, our joyful and confident expectation that he will again deliver us from danger and destruction and draw us to himself. I love that. It says we have set our hope, our joyful and confident expectation. So if, if I'm walking around all like, God's working. He's just, praise God, he's so good. I'm not convincing myself nor anybody else. But if there's real faith there, which causes a hope, why? Because I see a different picture. I see the outcome. I see what God is saying. I am not depressed. And I am not walking around all heavy why? Because my hope's in God. My end is sure. Yes, amen. Right? Joyful expectation. What does that mean? That means whatever's going on in the world, I shouldn't be like this. Because it's going my way. Oh, no, it's not. It's going my way. Oh, no, it's not. No, I should be steady, increasing. Joyful expectation. Why? Because God's word is true. Why? Because he's my source. Why? Because I put my trust in him. So I can say this. He's been faithful. How many of you can say that? That's your testimony. He's been faithful. What? We look back in our past and we say what? He's been faithful. Do you know today he's faithful? Do you know tomorrow when you wake up he's still going to be faithful? So that's some joyful expectation that I can have. Because what is he? Faithful. He, he can't be anything else but faithful. But what? What do I have to do? I have to choose to believe that. When something else contrary, when another report or another situation or something comes up that would be contrary to what God's word says he is, faithful, true, the source, whatever it is, I have to choose to believe what he says over what I'm hit with. And I know this is stuff we've heard before. But I'm telling you, we're walking in times where we have to say, I trust God. As the church, for us to do what we're called to do, for us to shine like we're called to shine. We can't be hiding. We can't be down. We can't be depressed. We can't be up and all over the place. We have to be steady. We have to be moving forward. We have to be the light he's called us to be. Okay, 
So pressure can go on and it can come against you. But you know what? You have the choice of whether you're going to let it in you. What do we see? Pressed. But what does it say? Not crushed. We're going to look at that in a minute. So, so what was that? There's pressure all around. But you know what? Not in me. The enemy wants to send something. Nope, not today. I resist that. Not here. Okay. So let's go to 2 Corinthians um, 4, 8 through 9. We're going to look at this here. We are hedged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out, but not driven to despair. We are pursued, persecuted, and hard driven, but not deserted to stand alone. We are struck down to the ground, but never struck out and destroyed. So troubled here means this, pushed, pressed, or squeezed. Have you ever felt pushed, pressed, or squeezed? I have. Plenty of times. So what did we, what did we say earlier? Living by faith doesn't ensure that no pressure will come against you. We know that, right? But no matter what comes, you can control what gets in you. If I'm full of fear, that's not because the enemy made me full of fear. What was it? I allowed that. I allowed that spirit of fear to enter through what? His suggestion. He can't just go... I have to take that suggestion and think on it and dwell on it. And what does it begin to do? It actually begins to paint pictures of a very dark, gloomy future. Any thought the enemy plants is always going to be what? Stealing, killing, and destroying. So that's the end goal for him. So how does he get in? It's not just like, oh, I... He gets in through suggestion. He gets in through fear. So if I'm feeling hopeless, if I'm feeling scared, if I'm taking a lot of care and anxiety, if I'm feeling weighted down and really heavy, it's not like, oh, yeah, the enemy just put this on me. No, 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 no. He suggested, suggested it. But I had to receive it. So he can suggest something. Pastor Nate says this, someone may suggest getting the steak at a restaurant when you say, what would you suggest or what would you recommend? And they would say, I'll, the steak. And then you can say, I'll take the burger and fries. Just because the enemy suggests it doesn't mean I have to take it. I get to choose. Say that. I get to choose. So if you've been walking around doomy and gloomy or scared or in fear or frustrated or whatever it might be, look at what you've been thinking on. Because you've been listening to the wrong voice, which is painting the wrong pictures, which eventually, if you keep going further, is just a fear really of death. It's a fear of death. It's a fear of a bad outcome. Which is what? He's the father of that. But what does it say? Jesus came that I give life. So how do I know when I'm taking the right suggestions is when the outcome painted for me is full of life. I have a smile on my face. It's joyful. Five years down the road, I'm not dreading life. I'm excited because why? It's going to be better. God's working and moving. My future's bright. Guys, we got to get a hold of this, especially as the church. Why? Because if I'm expecting doom and gloom, how, how am I supposed to help other people? And why would they want that? <laughs> like there's enough of that going on. But when I'm walking around as the light of the world that he's called me to because I'm focused on his word, I'm focused on what he's saying, it draws other people because they're going, you're not freaked out. You're not hunkered down in a hole. You're not all distraught. You didn't do 80 posts on Facebook that are all full of fear and afraid. 
Why? Because trouble may come, but what's on the inside is greater. Because I've chosen to take God's word and put it where? In my heart. Which does what? That word resists. It pushes back against that pressure. Okay. And then perplexed in that verse means this, to be at a loss, to see and have no way out. Have you ever been there where you feel like you have no way out, where you feel like it's hopeless? That is the enemy. It is never hopeless. I'll say that again. It is never hopeless. So anytime you're feeling like, hmm, huh? What? What's going on? What? Oh, my gosh. What's happening? Oh, oh. Wrong, wrong suggestion. Why? I know exactly what's happening. God's word's working. I know exactly what's happening. I'm full of joy. I'm full of peace because why? God's word is working. He has a plan. I don't have to be afraid. So many are defeated because the enemy likes to hold us in a realm of reason. The enemy likes to keep us right here in our mind, reasoning, figuring out, trying to make a plan, a backup plan. Well, if this happens, then I better be doing this, this, and this. Is that because God told you to do it? Or are you making that decision because you're afraid of Or you heard a newscaster say something and it got you down a trail and now you're going, oh, I I really better do something. Really? Because that's not where we're supposed to get our direction from. My direction comes from what I've heard my father say. And what I've heard my father say means there's blessing and provision and life on that plan. So reason delays believing. When I'm in the realm of reason, it delays believing. Have you been there before? (laughs) Plenty of times. We all have, right? When he gets me into reason, it delays believing. It tries to make me understand something first. This is where we get off. Because in reason, when he plants those suggestions, we think we have to understand everything Before we can do something. Do you know that's opposite of faith? Faith actually believes even when you don't understand. Sometimes you will understand, but there's a whole heck of a lot of time you don't understand. It doesn't make sense in the mind. But what? You choose to believe his word. And he brings the outcome about. I just have to choose to believe. So you don't have to understand it to believe it. It's just simply what? A choice to believe. Hebrews 11. You can look there. But all those accounts in Hebrews 11, we call it what? The faith chapter. What did all of these people choose to do? It says, by faith Moses, by faith Abraham, by faith Enoch, by faith Sarah, What was it? Did these people never mess up? No. We're silly if we read that chapter and think, oh, all these people just believe God and they never messed up. Yes, they did. And they were not in faith 100% of the time. So don't disqualify yourself because you look and go, oh, I'm not in faith. You know how quick it is to step back into the realm of believing? I believe. What is it? I choose to believe. Look at Abraham and Sarah. What did they have to do? Choose to believe. They tried to do it what? In the realm of reason. Wasn't happening on their timeline. Wasn't happening the way they thought. Wasn't happening quick enough. So what did they say? Well, I'm going to just help God. That's never good. (laughs) And then what happened? They just had to step back over into choosing to believe. And he's named as a person In Hebrews 11, as a by faith, everyone in here is named a person, by faith Mona, by faith Juan, by faith Chelsea, 
by faith, Tom. By faith, why? Because I choose to believe. I messed up, oh well, I choose to believe. Don't let the enemy get you down and stay down. Get back up. Right now, today. Today. Okay, let's look at John 14, 27. It says, peace I leave with you, my own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. So what do we see here? This is Jesus talking before he leaves earth and he's talking to his disciples and he says, my peace I give to you. So what was that? It was a gift. You know what you have to do with the gift? Receive it. That's how simple. That's how simple faith is. He gives the gift of peace. Tonight he's handing out the gift of peace and you know how simple it is just to choose to say, okay, I'll take that. We have the choice. And you know what I love here? It doesn't say, Jesus will stop allowing you to be agitated. Jesus will not permit you to be fearful or intimidated or cowardly or unsettled. Jesus is going to do that for you. You know what he said? My peace is here. It's a gift to you. But you know what I have to do? I have to choose to believe it. And five minutes from now, I'm going to have to pick up that gift of peace again and choose to believe it. And when I go home and I hear the news or read a post on Facebook, I'm going to have to choose to believe what he's given. This is so powerful. We choose it. I love that it says this. Stop allowing yourself. You do that. I can't do that for Matt. I can't do it for Mona. I can't do it for... Nate, I can't do it. What is it? It's my choice for myself to say, I'm going to stop being agitated, and Lord, I'm going to receive that peace that you've given me. That's a promise. But we have the choice. So we can choose to yield to unbelief and fear, or we can yield to believing and peace. We have the choice. So the enemy cannot trouble your heart. He can't force you to fear. He can come and he can dress up like a bad guy. But I still choose whether I'm afraid or not. I still choose. Just like Jesus is handing that gift of peace, the enemy is trying to hand you a package of fear and torment and care and worry. And you know what? You can say no. No to that. I'm not, I'm not having that. I'm choosing peace. We have a choice. Say that. I have a choice. Okay, let's see where we want to go here. So just like Paul said earlier, it's possible to have fear, terror, and trouble all around you and be totally at peace and joyful on the inside. What did we see? Everything was around them, trying to crush them, trying to press them, trying to break them down. But what was it? On the inside, there was something greater. So there can be chaos all around us, but not a, it doesn't have to be inside us. There can be fear all around us, but guess what? It doesn't have to be inside me. It's all what I choose to focus on, what I choose to believe. So what's in me? What's in you? If you've received Jesus, what's, who's in you? Jesus. Christ is in you. That's better than the response I got. <laughs> like, take a minute. Think about that. Christ is in you. The hope of glory. The very resurrection life is living in you. And that resurrection life isn't meant to just be in me. It's meant to flow out of me. But you know what? When I am bound up with fear and torment and care and worry, 
I am not focused on that life coming out of me. I'm focused on what? This is the ploy of the enemy. My preservation, my well-being, what life is about. It's all about me. And I start to get what? Focused on me. And then what? The purpose and plan that God has for me and for others to benefit of the life of God that's on the inside of me, it's stopped up due to fear. Right now, that life must be flowing out of us. As beyond church, the life of God that's inside of you must be flowing out of you in this time and season. This is why it is so important to watch what you're feeding on. And when the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, shut that off, don't listen to that, don't talk that way, don't do this, don't do that, it's not just like, well, I need to make my point, or I need, I need to know what's going on. I'm not saying bury your head in the sand, but I am saying when the Holy Spirit comes with a check of, okay, it's time to shut it off, or okay, this is getting a little too much and it's allowing fear to enter in, into your home, into your marriage, That's a good time to shut it off and to go to the source. What does his word say? Do you notice when you take your eyes off of whatever's feeding you, the voice of fear, and you get it over onto the word? I mean, just those songs that we sung tonight, what did it do? I I don't think when we were singing them that anyone was going, I'm going to die. Oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? No, what is it? You reign above it all. You sent the darkness running. What is it? This is the word of God. What is it doing? It's painting the right picture. It's painting me as victorious over death and darkness. This is what the power of the word does. When I read John 14, 27, what we just read there about my peace I leave with you, and you focus on that, and you see your, your future full of peace. You see your future bright. You see the future of your children and grandchildren. You see the future of this country bright. It's not doom and gloom. Why? Because the church is set here. And we better be using our mouth to speak what God's word says about our country, not what we see. What does God's word say? If what's coming out of my mouth is doom and gloom and just repeating the narrative, then I'm actually being used as a tool of the enemy to create more darkness. Do you know even though you are a person of light, you can create darkness with the words of your mouth? I choose And in this time and season, we better be choosing to build up. We better be choosing to lift up. We better be choosing where we see darkness, not to go, oh, that's really dark and it's really horrible. And oh my gosh, what are we going to do? No. And if I hear my friend saying that, I should have enough gumption to go, no. No, we're speaking light here. Where we see darkness, yeah, we see it. But you know what? We say light be there. That's why we're set here. We're not set here to just go, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. I have Jesus, and he's coming back to get me, and glory to God, I'm going to heaven. And I'll just wait here till he shows up. No. We have a job to do. And our job is to move forward, is to be joyful, is to be expectant, That around the corner, I'm going to meet God's goodness. Around the corner, I'm going to meet God's faithfulness. It's not doom and gloom for me or my family or my church family or my community or nation. Hello. Why? Because God says different. And I'm choosing to do what? Believe what he says. The source. I was listening to Brother Keith. This was from 2016, I think. And he was just talking about taking every thought captive. And he was talking, I think I remember us talking about it a few years ago. But he said, take every thought captive that wants to do what? Exalt itself. What does that mean? Bring itself up higher 
than the name of Jesus. Well, guess what? There is nothing higher than the name of Jesus. So what does it do? It's, it's, or what does it say to do? It says to cast down those vain imaginations. So what did he say? Slap it down. Like he was physically saying. And he said, don't hit anybody, but just slap down those vain imaginations. Why? Sometimes we have to do like physically that when it's coming to say doom and gloom, care and worry. What do I have to do? No, in the name of Jesus, my God supplies all my needs. What's your promises? What does he say? It's not enough for me to just go. You look pretty dumb doing that, so you wouldn't want to do that. But what do I have to do? I have to use the word of God. It's not just, oh, I slap that down. No, I have to use the word of God to combat what he's trying to throw at me. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, what did he do? Oh, devil, don't do that. Stop saying that. That's not true. He said, it is written. We need to get that out. It is written, Satan. I'm blessed coming and going. It is written. My God does supply all my needs. It is written. What does he wrote? What, what promise to you? So we have to cast down that with the word of God. Okay. Now, um, I wanted to read uh, just a couple things here before we close over the next few minutes. You can just stand, and we're going to um, just agree together here the last uh, couple minutes. Are you all glad you came tonight? I love church. So the two things that um, I wanted to highlight on tonight is just healing, like I mentioned at the beginning, healing. Um, and then also just um, our nation, over our nation. And how many of you know the enemy likes to come with fear? So sickness is bad this year, or this is just going around, or COVID's increasing. No, we don't believe that. And I'm certainly not going to be walking around saying that. And I, hopefully you aren't either. Why? Because my words create. My words are powerful. I'm declaring what God says over our body, over our community. COVID, flu, strep, anything. Cancer, I don't care what it is. It has to bow to the name of Jesus. And it is not allowed here. And that sounds dogmatic, but the word is pretty dogmatic. It says he bore all. Guess what that means? New viruses that pop up, he bore it. New things that want to morph and he bore it. Stuff that wants to attach itself, he bore it. So I'm going to read a few healing scriptures here, and I just want us to agree together. It's at, uh, Exodus 15, 26. It says, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. He will put none of these diseases upon thee. Why? Because this was written in the Old Testament, but what do we see here? Jesus was that payment. So when Jesus hung on the cross, it's not based on my performance anymore. Jesus performed. He performed on the cross and what did God do? He put every sickness, he put every disease on that cross, on Jesus. And it says, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Why can I claim healing over myself? Because Jesus bore it for me. He sacrificed himself on the cross for me. He sacrificed himself for my children to be healed and whole. That means any headache, any little stuff. Sometimes we even want to just say okay to the stuff we can handle like a headache or I don't know what, little stuff, but we want to just say because it's not horrible, we can bear through it. No, he bore that. And I would encourage you, little stuff, use your faith on that stuff. 
declare healing over yourself. Picture him on that cross. Let's just do that right now. Close your eyes, and I want you, whatever thing, and you know what, the enemy may have convinced you that it's just little, it's not that big a deal. No, it is, because he bore it for you. So what is it? He, God was pleased, it says, to put his son on that cross. Why? Because he knew it was payment. Not only for us to be with him again, but payment for us to live a full life here and now. So any sickness and any disease, it says he is the Lord that healeth thee. Why? Because that promise was met 2,000 years ago when Jesus hung on that cross and he received every stripe on his back. It says his body was broken for us. It says we can be healed. We are healed because of that sacrifice that he made on the cross. So let's just lift our hands to him tonight. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that healing promise that you've given us. That Jesus hung on the cross, the stripes on his back, which he bore for us. You are our God. You are our healer, and we thank you. We receive that tonight. Just say, I receive my healing. I receive my healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, spirit, soul, and body. And every member of Beyond Church who's not here or who may be fighting sickness and disease, we call them healed and whole now. COVID, you must bow your knee, strep, cancer, flu, any type of sinus problems, heart issues, blood issues. We tell you be whole in the name of Jesus. You be whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And just a few other scriptures, if you want to write them down on healing. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it says, Surely he's bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Guess what that means? Depression has to bow its knee. Sorrowful, heavy, weighty, under. It's under the blood of Jesus. So what is it? Lord, I receive my healing. I say this a lot. Spirit, soul, body. Matthew 8, 16 and 17, um, it's just an example of someone that was possessed with devils. He cast his spirit out, I love this, with his word, and he healed all that were sick. Every time you read in the Gospels, it says he healed all. He healed all. He went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. Healing all. You qualify under the all. Amen. Amen. Okay, now I just want to pray this prayer over um, America. This was, I think this was the same one that I um, prayed a few weeks ago when we were praying, but this was one Pastor Lynn, our, our pastor up in Minnesota, um, wrote out, and I, I just want to pray. So you can just close your eyes and agree. It says, Father, in the name of Jesus and according to your word, we pray for those in authority in our nation. We lift up President Donald Trump, his family, his staff, and cabinet members. Let your word cling to them and let them not depart from your plan. Strengthen them with mighty power by your spirit to stand against wickedness, lies, and deception. Guide President Trump's decisions. Let your light shine upon his path and show him the path of reversal for every evil way. Continually surround him with godly men and women who impart wise counsel to him. Cause the way of the wicked to be set to confusion and come to nothing. Deliver us from the traps and snares the enemy has laid for us. And let the wicked be caught in their own devices and be brought to shame. We take authority over the plots and plans of the enemy against our nation. Let prideful and lying lips be silenced in Jesus' name. Slanders will not be established in America. We pray for our Congress, our Supreme Court, our military leaders, and our intelligence agencies. Let the wisdom that is from above reign in this nation and be constantly speaking to our leaders. We exercise the authority that you have given us to tread down all the power of the enemy. We cast down and demolish imaginations and arguments that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 
We bind spirits of strife and division, civil wars and tumults, spirits of hostility, lawlessness and blasphemy, and fires from hell that have burned in our cities. We speak grace and peace over America. We pray and believe for the voice of truth, salvation, revival, and restoration to be proclaimed and heard across our land. Grant unto your servants everywhere that with all boldness we may speak your word. We pray for a mighty outpouring of your spirit with signs, wonders, and miracles. We expect the wisdom of this world, of this world that is earthly, sensual, and devilish to depart and vanish until your mighty work in America becomes a beacon of hope for all people everywhere. We expect the voice of rejoicing to be heard in our nation for your goodness, mercy, and prosperity. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just lift our hands. Father, we thank you. We thank you that your word is working. Your word is working in us, in our marriages, in our families, in this congregation of believers. We thank you in our city, in the state, and in our nation. We thank you. Healing, healing, healing healing of bodies, healing over this nation. We thank you, Lord. You are doing the work, and we choose to partner with you and to proclaim what you say and what your word says. And may our lips, may our voice be used to bring light and to bring hope and to speak and declare your word. And we say tonight, we will not fear but we receive your peace tonight, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you all so much. Go grab those kiddos. Tell the children's workers thank you, and we love you, and we will see you on Sunday.